Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today and thanks for taking a little time to watch the video today. It's much appreciated. And today I'm gonna to talk about um, probably one of the most underutilized lures out there. Uh, they've always been underutilized, but they really are now. It's one of the greatest lures you can use this time of year for over for about the next couple of months. And that's the that's a blade bait. I'm gonna give you guys all the juice on blade baits, uh, how to fish them, what type of water to look for them, and why they are so awesome and so uh, nobody uses them except guys that try to keep it secrets all the time. You know, down here at Table Rock Lake where I'm from, a lot of guys use these things, don't talk about them. So we're gonna talk about them today a little bit more. Now, real quick, just a couple quick housekeeping tips, guys. <clears throat> if you guys haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It'd be much appreciated. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know, we're, we're, I'm, I got a cold right now. I'm trying to recover from this, but we're three kids that are in daycare and elementary school. You talk about it's just germs coming in all the time. It's hard to hard to not catch a cold once in a while. So sniffling a little bit through the video here. But anyway, here, like I said, blade baits, uh, you know, guys that use them, you know, in certain parts of the country don't talk about them a lot. And I'm going to give you all the juice on that. But real quick, back to the housekeeping tips here. Um, yeah, if you guys had a chance to please subscribe to the channel. It'd be much appreciated. We're really working hard to, to get to that 50,000 subscriber mark and got some great giveaways when we get there. Just please hit the subscribe button. And also, if you guys are interested in becoming a member of the channel, which you get additional videos every day, every week that aren't seen by the public, access to my personal email address for your personal fishing questions on some memberships. Um, and if you like what I'm doing here, it's a really great way to support the channel and that's much appreciated. Okay, let's talk about blade baits a little bit, guys. <clears throat> I think a lot of people, if you've been around a long time, you've heard of a bait called a gay blade. A gay blade was a blade bait, one of the first blade baits out there. Uh, guys, it never did really catch on that much. I mean, it's sort of like in the same category, that little George, jig and spoons, that type of stuff. But the difference between a blade bait and a lot of other baits that are sort of fished vertical or semi-vertical in the winter time of the year, that a blade bait has got a tremendous amount of vibration on it. And this is a mega bass diner response blade bait. It's the most realistic looking blade bait I've ever seen. You guys tell me that doesn't look like a shad now. That's just unbelievable attention to detail. You guys can pick these up if you want some. Go to Baitworks, uh, the, uh, Baitworks website. I'll include the link in the description. If you order them on that link it's another good way to help support the channel or you can just swing by the store in springfield if you missouri if you ever get up there but this is it the mega bass diner response um so anyway let's talk a little bit about <coughs> the blade bait why it's effective in the winter time of the year <coughs> excuse me guys <coughs> anyway a blade bait is designed to be fished uh not cast and reeled it's designed to be fished sort of like a jig and spoon, like a vertical uh, vertical type presentation. Although I don't fish it vertical too much. The way that I like to fish it is I make a cast out there, let it hit to the bottom or to the zone that I'm trying to target if the fish are suspended. And I just pump it back and let it hit the bottom again. Pump it, let it fall back. If I'm fishing for suspended fish, I'll work it a little bit faster because I'm just trying to pump it through the school like that pump it through the school. If I'm fishing on the bottom, I'm actually wanting to pump it off the bottom, let it hit the bottom. Once that line goes slack, I pop it off the bottom again. And that's usually when they're on there. But that's, but most of the strike or most of the presentation is when your line is either fairly vertical or no more than like a 45 degree angle coming up. It's not, doesn't come through the water in a horizontal plane. It's not like you throw this thing out there and reel it in like a crankbait. So from that standpoint, it's like more like fishing a jig and spoon. The reason this thing works so great in the winter time is it resembles a dying shad. I mean, there's nothing that's even close to a blade bait when it comes to uh, resembling a dying shad, you know, simply because it falls quick, looks like a shad, got some, you know, a lot of the characteristics that a shad does. That's why it's so effective. Now, places that I like to fish the blade bait in, a lot of the times it depends on the lake that you're fishing and the type of cover that's available on the lake you're fishing. Um, some of my favorite ways to fish it is if you have a lake that has a lot of submerged timber in it. 
um, lakes like Lake Lanier in Georgia, Lake Hartwell in South Carolina, Ozark Lake, some of the Tennessee lakes. If you guys have places that have uh, deep suspended timber or deep submerged timber, the thing that I like to do more than anything else is I'll go back into the major creek arms where they start to narrow down and I idle in the middle of these creek arms and I try to find the submerged timber in deep water. Um, say for example, if I'm fishing uh, like Lake Hartwell in, in South Carolina, you know, I'll get in, you know, 40, 50, 40 to 50 feet of water. I try to find those treetops that are coming up to like 20 to 25 feet of the surface. And then I go through that area and I just pitch and flip the blade bait around in the tops of these timber, in the top of the submerged timber, and simply pump it uh, over the tops of that timber for suspended bass. It's a really good way to catch them. Here comes Elijah. <laughs> what are you doing there, Tyner? Huh? What are you doing? I want, I want you to come in the room with us. Okay, I'm just about done here. Let me finish up here, okay? So, he's in there watching the movie. He wants me to come in and watch it with him. So that's one thing. The second place I like to fish it is back to my favorite wintertime areas. No, you can't play with that. Dad, I'm no. Okay, no, no, you can't play with that. I'm making a stair twister. Okay, we'll be back one second, guys. I gotta take care of life here. Okay, we're back. Okay, the second area that I like to fish it in is, and you're gonna hear me talk about this a lot as we talk about a lot of winter techniques over the next couple of months, main lake secondary points. The great thing about fishing main lake and secondary points with the blade bait is you can do a lot of different stuff with it. I can fish the bottom in say 15 to 30 foot of water, excuse me, cast it out over those point ends and sides, <coughs> or pump it back off the bottom, let it hit the bottom, pump it off the bottom, let it go back. And I can super effectively work deep water in a hurry. And that's, the, that's one of the big keys with this bait is most of the time when you're fishing deep water, it's a slow type of a deal. But with the blade baits, you can cover a tremendous amount of water that's deep in a hurry. I can pull up on a main lake point and I can start on the side of it and work around the end to the other side. And I can make, you know, 10 or 15 casts on that point with that blade bait in deep water, in 25 to 50 foot of water. If I catch them, I can stay and keep fishing. If I don't, I move it to the next one. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Also on, top, on the point ends, if I get really deep on those points, a lot of the lakes that have the same type of submerged timber, um, you have timber out off the end of those points, sometimes 70, 80, 90, 100 foot of water with the tops of them coming anywhere between 20 to 40, 50 feet. I've caught bass on these blade baits where you can get in 80, 90 foot of water and the tops of the timber come within 30 to 40 foot of the water and again, pitching that blade bait down in there, fishing it vertical or at a 45 degree angle is a great way to catch them there. But anyway, guys, give them a try this, uh, this winter. Um, that's sort of like the spy bait video I did yesterday. If you guys hadn't had a chance to see it, a lot of people are intimidated by blade bait. They, they're intimidated. I, one of the baits I found intimidation, I'll do a video on this later. People are intimidated by blade baits, jigging spoons, ice jigs. Uh, spy baits, a lot of different stuff like that. Don't be intimidated by these blade baits. It's not that hard to fish them. You know, just basically fish them. You can do good on blade baits, just do nothing but fishing points. Everybody can fish a point. It's a basic 101 bass fishing structure. And a blade bait is a great area. It's a, a great place to try a blade bait. So real quick here, uh, different color variations and equipment. I usually stay with some type of a chrome or silver finish. Some guys will use, I've, I've got some here that uh, some guys like a, a flatter finish, uh, say on the cloudy days if it's raining. Um, I know some guys will like something like, uh, got one here, like a flat finish, like a chartreuse like that. If it's real cloudy out, yeah, it can, can work good. But mainly I like to stay with the more uh, metallic finishes. Tackle setup, I'm usually using like a seven foot some type of medium, medium heavy action rod. You want something that has a fairly fast tip on it because when you're fishing that deep water, um, a lot of times you got a lot of stretch in your line, even with fluorocarbon. So if you're in 40, foot, 40 to 50 feet of water and you're jerking that thing off the bottom, um, you there's a lot of stretch in that line with that much distance out. So that's why I like a fairly stiff tip. 
most of the time I'm using like 15 pound test line. That seems like that's a good good line to get good action. And if you get hung up in the treetops, a lot of times you can you can straighten the hooks out and you don't lose your bait. So give them a try guys, just uh, check out Baitworks, get you some blade baits, the uh, Sonic side uh, from Mega Bass. And I think it's gonna be a pretty good time for you this winter. Let me know how it works out. So we'll talk to y'all later.